I want to go back for a second here, Stugatz, and tackle what it is that I felt uh, pretty lonely about over the course of this weekend. And I understood it because I do believe that Stugatz speaks for the majority when he says of all of these sideline reporters gathering together and protecting the integrity of their craft. And there was absolutely an undercurrent here because this is a blonde woman from other sideline reporters saying, hey, the stereotype about us that we're always trying to climb over in order to get to credibility Carissa has blasphemed against the seriousness of the profession in a way that made a whole bunch of people gather up defensively on what I think is a fairly obvious point, which is the reporter can't make something up. But we're at a place with where it is that people feel about journalism and media in general that I believe that I am in the minority when I say what I think is an obvious thing a reporter making stuff up in my history in journalism has always been a fireable offense. Now, I'm not saying that she should be fired. I'm saying that the industry standard on this has always been that, except it doesn't seem like it's that now. And it also doesn't seem like people at large care very much. And there is where I feel Super lonely, Stugatz, on the idea of this seems obvious to me that this can't be okay, and yet Stugatz is hardly alone with saying, yeah, don't care, just assume sideline reporters make stuff up. Before we get to your thoughts there, Stugatz, I want to play the original clip that um, from part of my take that got Carissa Thompson all in this uh, trouble. I, and I've said this before, so I haven't been fired for saying it, but I'll say it again. Um, I would make up the report sometimes because, A, the coach wouldn't come out at halftime or it was too late. And I was like, I didn't want to screw up the report. So I was like, I'm just going to make this up because, mm -hmm. first of all, no coach is going to get mad if I say, hey, we need to skill stop. Uh, hurting ourselves we needed to be better on third down we yep. need to stop turning the ball Pressure over the quarterback we need, yeah exactly <laughs> and and do a better job of getting off the field like they're not going to correct me on that right. so i'm like it's fine i'll it just make up the report i'll read her statement now let's address the elephant in the room i have a responsibility to myself and employers to clarify what is being reported when on a podcast this week i said i would make up reports early in my career when i worked as a sideline reporter before i transitioned to my current host role working in media i understand how important words are and i chose the wrong words to describe the situation i am sorry i've never lied about anything or been unethical during my time as a sports broadcaster there is a discussion to be had as to why she's not getting the access that she should be getting you know considering the right fees and what they pay for they pay for that kind of access so that's that's a separate conversation but dan the reason no one cares is what is she lying about it's sports. It's football. Someone is going down to her for a report, and she is saying, I spoke to the coach. The offense needs to block better. That's what she's lying about. I know, but, Dan, it's football. It's sports. More people would care if this was serious stuff. It's not serious stuff. Okay. It's a football sideline report. I, I would say that credibility should matter, and you should uh, have a standard for what it is that you expect to be spoken from your broadcasters. And the standard shouldn't be so low as to... Eh, if it's made up, I'm good. Oh. If it's totally a made up thing that she, first of all. Well, she's she's denying that she made it up, even though she said in that clip. I mean, you line up her quote and what she said there. She says she chose the wrong word. And she it said does, it's not the first time she said yeah, that. Yeah, no, right. it, it, her statement goes on to say that the stuff that she would say on these sideline reports would be stuff that she learned throughout working on the week. So it wasn't like she was being disingenuous about what the the game plan was set out to be she just had to think on her feet and i think that that's a discussion she got alluded to it rachel Benetta actually kind of changed my perspective because i saw everybody lining up against carissa thompson who i'm not sure if everyone's familiar with her story but it hasn't had an easy go of things in the public eye and rachel Benetta made me really think about it differently and that the discussion is everybody going up against carissa thompson you can understand why but not how carissa thompson has to deal with i mean there are billions of dollars in rights fees to make sure a coach is available 
for these meaningless halftime things that all of a sudden we've attributed a ton of meaning to because heaven forbid Carissa Thompson think on her feet because a coach didn't want to give her the time of day to speak. How is that allowed? How is, how is the issue not some of us talking about, wait a second, someone has to go as far as making things up because a coach doesn't want to talk to Carissa well, she, Thompson? She doesn't have to make it up. Like That shouldn't be one of the options, even but, but if the one coach of the options isn't available. Well, one of the options shouldn't necessarily be. The coach can just buzz me off. Well, she went on to say, in the absence of a coach providing any information that could clear, that could further my report, I would use information that I learned and saw during the first half to create a report. For example, if a team was 0 for 7 on third down, that would clearly be an area they need to improve on in the second half. In these instances, I never attributed anything I said to a player or a coach. I have nothing but respect for sideline reporters and for the, for the tireless work that they put in behind the scenes and on the field. I am only appreciative and humbled to work alongside some of the best in the business and call them some of my best friends the issue is and Former. why why everyone came out after her that's in the industry is because then you just assume it could be made up by any one of these people and a lot of these people had to work not that she didn't but a lot of these people had to work their entire careers to even get that opportunity and get to that position and if you have someone coming on here saying i could just kind of make my own report based on things that i'm seeing because no one talked to me then you're like well they could say anything can i just be in the middle on this like, that's the part that I was taken aback could, by. The could. reaction of just, like, she's just, she's on a podcast. She's saying the thing. Like, she's not lying about She's not attributing, like she said, if, if she's making it up, she's not saying that it's a quote. She's just like, oh, they're bad on third down. They got to be better. Like, and, I, I feel like I don't, like, most of the time these things are white noise. I'm not even <laughs> listening to these things. I'm, and everyone's so irate. It just feels well, like people, people actually, are just looking for a no, reason to get mad. But she's basically telling you what the coach would have said had she had access to the coach. Like, why do we care so much? Jay Billis has come on this radio show, this podcast, and he has said a number of times, of course I don't watch every college basketball team play. That's not but that same. doesn't it's prevent not, me from going on. Dan, he has told thing. me this. Stugatz, it's not the same Dan, thing. Dan, he does the NCAA preview show, he's and he's talking about a 16 seed pretending, that he's never watched pre before. Pretending expertise is not the same. Play the sound again because misspeaking, Stugatz, this is, I didn't actually talk to the coach. I, and I've said this before, so I haven't been fired for saying it, but I'll say it again. Um, I would make up the report sometimes because, A, the coach wouldn't come out at halftime or it was too late. And I was like, I didn't want to screw up the report. So I was like, I'm just going to make this up. Because, first of all, no coach is going to get mad if I say, hey, we need to kill, stop uh, hurting ourselves. We needed to be better on third down. We yep. need to stop turning the ball Pressure over. The quarterback. We need, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and do a better job of getting off the field. Like they're not going to correct me on that. Right. I'm like, it's fine. I'll it, just make up the report. It's just weird judgment, right? Like on doing it, on sharing it, like on a podcast that you know. Like part of my take. She the said it before the podcast. Like right. everyone's going to hear job. this. Yes. Well, I mean, but here, the, okay, the lane that she lives in now is that that's not her job, right? So, like, now she's a host, but you then question, like, well, who's making this up? Who's not making this up? If she's still in the position, it's a completely different reaction, I think, right? If she's still doing that job. Is it? I, she's been promoted. No, I think if she's still in that job and she says, I've been making this up, she's fired. But because she's a host now rather than a sideline reporter, what are you going to do? I don't I don't know which judgment is worse, doing it or admitting it years later when you have a $700,000 a year job.